Sometimes, when you're reading Islam's most trusted sources, you get the impression that it's a bunch of idiotic nonsense. Like when you read that stars are missiles that Allah uses to shoot demons, or that the sun sets in a muddy pool, or that Satan hides in your nose, or that most of the punishment of the grave is for urinating improperly. Other times, you get the impression that Islam is just a system that Muhammad came up with to satisfy his sexual urges, like when he received a revelation telling him to have sex with a prepubescent girl, or when he received a revelation telling him to have sex with his slave girls, or when he received a revelation telling him that even though all other Muslims were limited to four wives, he could have as many as he wanted. Still other times, you get the impression that something completely demonic is at work, like when Muhammad first started receiving revelations and he thought that he was demon-possessed, or when he delivered the infamous satanic verses, or when he claimed that he was a victim of a magic spell that gave him delusional thoughts and false beliefs. When we read moronic stories about Muhammad telling his followers to drink camel urine, or perverted revelations commanding Muhammad to take the wife of his own adopted son, Islam sounds like it came from the mind of an illiterate, superstitious, morally depraved man. But when we read about how Muhammad received his revelations, and it sounds like something out of an exorcist film, we wonder if there's something darker at work. The demonic nature of Islam becomes especially clear when we think about Islam's response to the Gospel. The Gospel is a message about how God gives the righteousness of Christ to people who don't deserve it. We aren't good enough to spend eternity with a perfect being, and there's nothing we can do to make us good enough to spend eternity with a perfect being. So if we're going to spend eternity with a perfect being, we need a righteousness that comes from someone other than ourselves. The Greek word for gospel means good news. The good news is that God gives the righteousness of Christ to people who did absolutely nothing to earn it. The three key elements of the gospel are Jesus' death for sins, his resurrection from the dead, and his divine nature. Jesus and his apostles warned us that false teachers and false prophets would come, and that they would lead people away from the gospel. More than five centuries later, Muhammad comes along and says, Hey Christians, I'm on your side. I believe in Jesus too. You believe Jesus was born of a virgin? So do I. You believe he was sinless? So do I. You believe he lived the most miraculous life in history? So do I. You believe he's the Messiah? So do I. You believe he's going to return and judge the world? So do I. We agree on almost everything except these three little things. Jesus didn't die on the cross, he didn't rise from the dead, and he isn't Lord. Now, if we can just change those three little things, the core teachings of the gospel, then I won't have to violently subjugate you. It's a little demonically perfect, isn't it? A little too demonically perfect. How about this? In Sahih Muslim 69.22, Muhammad says that Allah wants people to sin. He says, By him in whose hand is my life, sounds pretty serious, if you were not to commit sin, Allah would sweep you out of existence, and He would replace you by those people who would commit sin and seek forgiveness from Allah, and He would have pardoned them. So if you don't sin, Allah will destroy you, because He can't forgive you if you don't sin. Notice two things here. One, if human beings hadn't sinned, Allah would have destroyed us for not sinning. But according to Islam, why did human beings end up sinning? because Satan tempted us. If we hadn't sinned, Allah would have destroyed us, but we did sin, thanks to Satan. So Satan saved humanity by tempting us to sin. Who's the real savior in Islam? Satan. Two, if Allah wants us to sin, and he's so enraged when we don't sin that he'll destroy us, who is Allah's ultimate enemy? Someone who refuses to sin. Who's that, according to Islam? Not Muhammad. Muhammad sinned like everyone else. Everyone except Jesus. 
So Jesus is Allah's supreme enemy because he's sinless. Here's another one. In the Bible, Jesus is repeatedly called King of Kings. But in Sahih al-Bukhari, we read, Narrated Abu Huraira, the prophet said, The most perfidious... Did this guy seriously just use perfidious in a translation? Awful? Perfidious is more along the lines of treacherous and deceptive. Anyway, remember that for your SAT, kids. The most perfidious, awful name with Allah, Sufyan said more than once, the most perfidious, awful name with Allah is that of a man calling himself King of Kings. The most awful name with Allah is one of the names of Jesus. Now think about Islam's version of the crucifixion. Jesus' death by crucifixion is foundational to Christianity. But according to Islam, Jesus was never crucified. Instead, Allah took Jesus safely to heaven. Then Allah took someone else, Judas, according to most Muslims, and disguised him to make him look like Jesus. So everyone thought that Judas was Jesus, thanks to Allah's miraculous makeover, and Judas was crucified in Jesus' place. Notice the complete gospel reversal. In Christianity, the innocent Jesus dies on behalf of the guilty. In Islam, the guilty Judas dies on behalf of the innocent, namely Jesus. Islam completely reverses the gospel. It replaces the message of a sinless man willingly accepting the punishment that we, the guilty, deserve with a message of a guilty man unwillingly being disguised by Allah and executed in the place of the innocent. According to Islam, the crucifixion of Jesus was a massive deception. But it wasn't a deception by Jews or Christians or Romans. It was a deception by Allah. So Allah is admitting in all of this that he's a deceiver who starts false religions and leads billions of people astray. Are you starting to see how utterly demonic this is? It's like Satan came up with the ultimate corruption of the gospel and wrote, Satan was here all over it and spent the past 14 centuries bragging about how people will believe his ridiculous story anyway, even if that story was brought by the most obvious false prophet in history. You atheists who are watching, be honest. When you see what the gospel is, and you see that the job of false prophets is to corrupt the gospel, and you see Muhammad claiming to be a prophet, but completely reversing the gospel in truly demonic fashion, don't you start to wonder if there really is a spiritual battle going on all around you? This is a power of religion, there's a reason to it. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah?